Hi guys and welcome to the next adventure of MC Urban Exploration. Today we're at... We're at Mulgrave Castle, as you can see in the background. So what we're going to do now is show you a little bit of drone footage, take you over the castle and we will be then having a walk around and giving you the history on this place. The first fortification was built at Mulgrave in the years immediately following the harrying of the north which took place in 1069 to 1070. William I's ruthless devastation of large tracts of land in northern England following a rebellion against Norman rule. The fortification was an earth and timber mot and bailey known as Foss Castle and was erected a few hundred metres away from the site of the later Mulgrave Castle with what you see today. Later Foss Castle was abandoned and replaced with Mulgrave Castle which was constructed on the plateau of a hill between Sands End Beck and East Row. The natural slopes of the plateau were cut away to create an oval shaped platform. This was riveted by a stone curtain wall which formed the defensive circuit around the enclosure. Accordingly the entire Bailey interior was in excess of 7 metres higher than the surrounding land and over the years required extensive buttressing along portions of the curtain wall to ensure stability. A dry moat provided protection on the east, west and south sides of the castle whilst the north was protected by the steep descent to Sands End Beck. Mulgrave Castle was originally called Mont Grace, but this was deliberately corrupted to Montgrave, which later evolved into Mulgrave. Two archways there, uh, and look at the size of that. That's been rebuilt. That it's got to have been on it. I mean, look at this. This is a coat of arms in the fireplace. Oh wow! With a date of 1664 on here. So is that when a new family acquired this? It because it's passed through. Well, it'd be it? interesting to find out what coat of arms that family. Uh, is this, that coat of arms is associated we'll with. We'll get a shot of that. I yeah, mean, we'll there's some Latin. We'll that and then yeah. we'll do some research and find out what family that coat of arms belongs to. Because it will belong to one of them. So, am I right in saying that this from first built by um, Nigel, Foss, Nigel Foss, it's passed through the family in generations? Well, it was passed through the family. Uh, it's generally passed down to the son, the, yep. the heir, and, but sometimes. Um, when they didn't have a son, it actually went to one of the daughters, yep, which yep. then it changed family hands. Yep. And there's a lot of history on that, which I'll talk about. It's amazing, this place, like. I mean, this is this is one of them fireplaces, which uh, you saw in history at school, where people sat within the grid. Oh, God, uh, they and did, yeah. the, in the Victorian ages, they had like benches either side yeah. and a huge pot in yeah. the middle. Oh yeah. That is amazing that and that goes right up to the top of That's a massive chimney. Here. I wonder if it vented the upstairs as well, heat wise. I don't know. I can't see how it did. There must have been no. um, another I mean these sort places of were cold anyway. If we go back to Wharton Castle when we look at that, there's a fireplace and then the next floor, which would have been there, there's another fireplace offset. Yeah. Well, there's uh, no evidence here no, what, no, what's there's left that there isn't any of fireplaces above. Yeah. Uh, the only central place would be this, which would be the only source of heat in this yeah. place. And um, some places back in the day had back-to-back -back fireplaces yeah, as did, well. Yeah, they did, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And utilise no the same chimney. Yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, interesting stuff. Shall we have a look through it? Yeah. I mean, the, the height of these were that to... I mean, look at that. I know, yeah. Oh, 
It's an awesome place. Following the outbreak of civil war in 1642, Mulgrave Castle was deemed strategically important and despite the Earl's support for the parliamentary cause, the castle was seized by Royalist forces. Thereafter the Royalists held it until June 1644, after which it was used as a prison. It was still in parliamentary hands in 1646 when Edmund was succeeded by his son, also called Edmund, and the following year Parliament ordered Mulgrave Castle to be slighted, to prevent any future use as a military site. Edmund was paid £1,000 in compensation. Look at the arrow slit there and it's like a shape uh, of a well, it's, cross. It's one here, one there, yeah. yeah. It's brilliant, and isn't it? There would have been one here as well. Yeah. Covering that flank. Yeah, there would have been, yeah. It's exactly the same as that, so part of this is gone. Despite the damage, the castle remained at least partially habitable and continued to be used until the 18th century and in 1735 the new Mulgrave Castle, a manor house was built a short distance to the northeast. and in 1792 Henry Phipps, Earl of Mulgrave, employed Humphrey Repton, a landscape gardener, to romanticise the ruins of the old castle, and he rebuilt the gatehouse towers and remodelled sections of the keep. Right folks, this was our video on Mulgrave Castle. We do hope you've enjoyed it. I mean, I've certainly enjoyed coming around here, have you Neil? It is, it's been amazing. It's a beautiful place. Look it up on the map, Mulgrave Castle. Uh, it's in the Mulgrave Estate and it's just from Leith and Sands End in the woods. It's, it's a brilliant little place. Like, it is, yeah. And it's a nice little walk out with the family and that, and you can have a little bit of a picnic here if you want. Yeah, we were promised some glorious sunshine today. Unfortunately, the weather uh, forecast is slightly wrong or out of sync, but it should have been a really hot, sunny day today. Unfortunately not, but that hasn't killed the spirit, has it? No, definitely not, no. Mm. So we've been MC Urban Exploration. Bye for now, folks. Take care, guys.